your MC today, uh, Hanyi. So first of all, we are GDSC UTEM, that stands for Google Developer Student Club in University Technical Malacca, Malaysia. Before we start the topic, I recommended you all to follow our social media such as Facebook with the link inside the chat box and also the Instagram. Our team will post the event such as workshop or study jam inside so you will be able to catch up the following event in the future. Besides that, we also have our YouTube channel. The event playback will be uploaded in case you miss out anything in the live event and you can look back inside the channel. So remember to subscribe our YouTube channel and our media social page. So what is GCP? GCP stands for Google Cloud Platform. It is a public cloud vendor and it also offer a suite of computer service with AI and machine learning tools. Google Cloud Platform gives us five main service that is computing and hosting, storage and database, networking, big data and machine learning. GCP Bole Challenge is a study jam, study jam that led by the GDG Cloud Kuala Lumpur team. It is an online self-study program that provides the developers in Malaysia with access to hands-on Google Cloud Labs. So the participant can also learn cloud, BigQuery and machine learning technologies on GCP with one month of free access to Google Cloud Skill Boost. So uh, for someone who didn't do the registration yet, you can click on the link inside the chat box to access the official GCP Bole website. Uh, from there, click the blue color register here from the website and we will link to a Google Form registration. A small reminder, please remember the deadline of this GCP Bole challenge is on November 14. So in the Google Form, please choose Google Developer Student Club at the How Did You Hear About GCP Bole session. So after that, you can choose your university name that is University Technical Malaysia Malacca in the next page of this Google Form registration. Now after you fill in the registration form, you will receive an email within 24 hours. Please make sure you click, you click on the link inside the step 1 of email to log in or sign up. If you didn't have any account, then you can sign up for a new account. But if you already have an account, then you can just simply sign in. After that, you will get 9 credits for your account. Complete any lab inside the quest, inside from data with BigQuery, and you will get your monthly subscription. We will guide you how to complete the lab from the speaker later on. In case you didn't receive any email, please check your spam box in your email. It may send there. After complete a number of quests, you can claim for your swag in the officer's GCP Bolet website that sent in the chat box just now. If you complete at least six quests, you can claim for a t-shirt, cap, and webcam cover. But if you are able to complete at least 14 quests, you can get a t-shirt, cap, webcam cover, and plus a backpack. So uh, remind again, submit your Google Cloud Skill Boost profile before the November 14. So now enter to our main topic guidance for GCP Bolet and welcome our speaker for today, Kyung Tong Na. He is currently studying in UTEM Year 4, Bachelor of Computer Science in Artificial Intelligence. His code is always eat, sleeps and thinks in code. So now I will pass my presentation to our speaker. Thank you. Um, so, hi everyone, you can hear me and see me, right? Everything's good? Yeah, sure. Okay, um, so um, welcome everyone to um, this uh, GCP Bole, I would say, guidance session. So, so let's do this together. So, so okay, sorry, I'm, I'm a little, <laughs> yeah, okay. Okay, so. Before I start anything, right, so I would like to just say uh, any opinionated statement uh, is my own, does not rep represent the SEU term whatsoever, and then all the content here is purely for educational purposes only. So if let's say you want to use the things taught here to do other illegal stuff, that's, that's your own problem, okay? Okay, so web session housekeeping before we start. So one, always mute your microphone unless you get prompted. I'm not sure if you guys can unmute even. Uh, and also today's webinar is being recorded. Yes, uh, so we will share a link after the event is complete and after our committees uh, edit the video. And of course, uh, after the event, slides will be shared. 
Okay, so today's event hashtags is this. I'll give you guys a few seconds. Okay, so agenda for today. Uh, number one, what is GCP Bole? And um, a little bit about registration. I know just now MC did talk about that a little, but I'll just go through. After that, I will go through on completing your first task. And then after that, how to make sure you have the monthly subscription for this thing. And then some off record stuff which means that stuff that I'm not allowed to say, but I want to tell you guys. So that one, we will stop the recording over there and then that's it. Yeah, for the recording, okay? And then after that, we will have free time where I will be uh, staying around here and uh, answering you guys' questions on anything or about the quest itself. Okay, so um, GCP Bole registration, register yourself at this particular uh, address. And then do take note the company and institution name is uh, UTEM or University Technical Malaysia Malacca, anything, your, your choice. And then after that, your company business email address will be your student email address. And then your company or institute website address will be, of course, UTEM. And then how do you hear about JCP Bole? It will be uh, Google Depot Student Club. And then after that, you select uh, uni uh, UTEM as um, that particular uh, DSC club. Lah. Okay, so um, what is GCP Bole? So it's an event by GDGKL, like our MC said just now. Uh, Singapore has a similar one called uh, Majula GCP. So because this is an event by GDGKL, so if let's say you have problems with the claim of the swags, uh, find GDGKL. You can find their Facebook page at uh, you can find their page at Facebook, and then uh, don't find us. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So um, the best, the main benefit about um, GCP Bole is that you win swags as you learn. Uh, really learn through the quest. So as we can see, um, the quest uh, that is happening that, that is being done now, as you can see here, uh, are mainly about uh, AI and uh, data exploratory, which means that you explore data and you do about AI stuff. And yeah, mainly it's about data, uh, AI, TensorFlow, image processing, SQL, yeah, all those data, data stuff. Lah. So I'll uh, more about it later. Okay, so um, yeah, so I assume you guys have already uh, signed up. So yeah, I will give you guys a little demo on completing the first task. And also I will have a little uh, brief through about what to uh, take note and what to uh, like, what not to do lah, basically. Okay, so as many of you have received that email, on this uh, particular GCP bole, remember. So, um, if if you guys want me to slow down or anything, just type in the chat. If let's say you want me to wait for you on signing that up, but um, I'll, I'll just continue for now. So, okay, first step to a GCP bole is uh, use this link to log in or sign up. So you go in. There will have something called, as you can see, there's a campaign code there. So remember to use this link to um to click to click this link and then go log in. So if let's say you have participated in GCP Bole before. Uh, this is the third GCP Bole, by the way. So you may have some uh, quest uh, completed. So if let's say you have insights from data with BigQuery completed, then there is another uh, thing called build and optimize data warehouse with BigQuery, which is uh, click from this link lah, if you uh, receive that also. So for now, I'll I'll do I'll do this the uh, insights from data with BigQuery. So the thing is opening here, but let me drag. So if let's say my computer hang, uh, forgive me. <laughs> okay, so if I remember correctly, I completed this uh, quest, the last GCP bullet. But anyways, so once you come in, you log in using your Google account, and then uh, just remember to have this uh, QL campaign, blah, 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 this thing up here. So like later on, when you complete your first quest, um, they will credit your account with a monthly subscription. So as you can see, like from my account here, you can see there's a monthly subscription here. Uh, okay. So I will start with the first quest. So first is introduction for BigQuery and Cloud SQL. Okay. So remember to click, especially the first quest, remember to click using the links provided here. Okay. So just a little brief to you guys. Uh, so this one will be mainly dealing with uh, SQL and the Cloud SQL. So SQL is, you know, as we know, structured query language, which, which is a database query language. And BigQuery is basically Google's uh, data warehouse solution. So what's the difference between a database and a data warehouse? So 
the most fundamental thing uh, you will see as a difference uh, between a data warehouse and a database is um, as far as I know, data warehouse, they don't really uh, emphasis on the use of primary keys. Okay, there's, there's, there's not an emphasis on primary keys and data warehouse just usually store data on the scale of uh, petabytes. So what is petabytes? Petabytes is basically you've got a kilobyte, megabyte, gigabyte, terabyte, uh, petabyte, yeah. So it's above a uh, petabyte. So if let's say you have a database or a warehouse database warehouse requirement of the petabyte scale, you can look into a uh, BigQuery. So um, BigQuery is uh, re really an engineering marvel, I would say. So I would recommend if you guys have the interest, you, you all can go and look and see how BigQuery operates because you can imagine it can shift through around one terabyte of data within 30 seconds, which is very amazing. So uh, without further ado, I will start with the first quest first. So I click on Start Lab. Okay, so as you know, once you start the lab, you cannot uh, simply end the labs, right? So of course, here's the CAPTCHA to prove that I'm human. I'm not sure if I'm human. I think it's this tree. Yep, okay. So this lab costs one credit. So if let's say you, you are new to this, so you will have, or you have nine credits, so you, you just click use credits. So you use it. And then for now, it will create a temporary account for you. So over here, you can see open Google console username, password, blah, blah, blah. So let's leave it for it like this. So um, just read through the overview, blah, blah, blah. Distinguish differences between tables and projects. Use the select account group by order by keywords. Uh, create Cloud SQL instance and load exported CSV file. So um, you don't need to log out of your personal and corporate Gmail. So let's just go next. So uh, before you click the start lab button, um, like I said just now, you cannot pause them because uh, this is a temporary account and this account will actually cost this uh, Google money. I don't know the logic behind them charging themselves, but yeah, it costs money. So previously, Cloud Skill Boost is called Quick Labs. So if let's say you don't know some solutions about this, you just go search for Quick Labs. Okay, so uh, opening Google Console, you right click, don't open in, uh, don't open in a new tab or new window, open an incognito window, okay? So the reason for this is because when you open in an incognito window, uh, it does not, uh, like the credentials does not mix with uh, with what you have. Uh, can someone mute uh, from the participant? Yeah, okay. So you got this, sign in using your Google account, which is this provided a Google account here. So for convenience, I will also recommend you guys do this uh, side by side. Eh, not, not this, sorry. I would recommend you guys do this side by side so you can look at the quest and you can also complete the thing at once. Eh, oh, sorry. Okay, so password. Okay, once you go through, um, so I assume you guys have some knowledge about uh, databases already. So I won't uh, go through what is a database for now. Um, so uh, look look through all this and then, okay. So this quest is basically saying that, okay, we want to select data from this uh, particular uh, data set. So for now, our data set is uh, having this user price and whether this thing is uh, shipped or not. So select from, as we know, uh, using database select which, uh, specify what fields we want to pull from data set. So for let's say we want to uh, we want to select user, price, and shipped, then the keywords will be a select user, price, uh, shipped, separated with a comma, okay? And then from where? So from will be this uh, example table, so which has this particular columns, okay? So as we can see, if you want to select everything, just, eh, oh, sorry, if you want to select user, just select user from this uh, particular table, right? So we can see, and where. So where is uh, we call uh, fil uh, the filtering. You can say where ship equals to yes. So it will just filter out all the uh, columns with the ship equals to yes. So because you select user only, so it will only return user. Okay. So uh, to test understanding, a keyword that specifies fields that you want to pull from data set, which is select, 
that stuff. So if let's say you got wrong with this, right? So let's say like this, you got wrong. You can keep on, uh, <laughs> you can keep on selecting until you get the correct one. Yeah. Okay. Uh, filter specific column values where? Okay. So, um, let's look at the BigQuery console. So this BigQuery console is uh, so. There's a difference between console and a command line. So console is this particular thing, this place where you click here and there, you go here and there. Yeah, so this is the console. And then if let's say uh, we say command line will be this one you launch from the cloud shell. So cloud shell is basically a temporary machine by a GCP, which is Google Cloud Platform uh, for you to do uh, for you to do specific stuff within Google Cloud Platform, because, like for example, if you're at UTEM, uh, you don't have ex you don't have direct access to the uh, GCP itself because UTEM blocks it. I don't know for what reason, but they block it. So you can use this uh, particular uh, Google Cloud shell to access stuff in your Google Cloud Platform uh, in your GCP account, basically. Okay. So for this quest, uh, let's do BigQuery, right? So uh, let's search for BigQuery. Okay, I give up searching. So BigQuery. Okay, so you got BigQuery, and then let's take a moment to take a look on this thing. So I will put the quest on one side, and then I will use this whole thing to explain what is the whole thing. So the BigQuery UI on the left here is uh, our pin projects. So BigQuery, they have this thing called a public data set where you can uh, explore uh, those data sets that are public, something like a coronavirus data, uh, like maybe mobility data and so on. So you can pin the things here and then you can request it. Okay, so, um, so let's see. Uh, we want to add data, right? So of course, in order to run searches, we need to add data. So we can add data and we can explore a public data set. So for the purpose of this quest, the public quest will be uh, London bicycles data. Okay, so you can see there are different different data sets here that you can take a look. Uh, it's like this. Okay, so uh, BigQuery public data data set is London bicycles. For London bicycles and see if there's anything about London bicycles here. Okay, so we have. So you can just click on this London Bicycles uh, thing here, and then we can explore the data. So in order to, uh, in, in order for your environments to be separate, right? Um, Google have made this to be, when you view a data set, you will open it in a new tab so you can continue working what you're working on here. Um, I know for the purpose of this quest, it will be very troublesome, but in the production level, this is actually um, the better solution, I would say. Okay, let's wait for it to load. Um, so before I continue, uh, if you guys have any questions, uh, I think the committee has uh, has put in the q and I'm not sure if they put it in, in the chat. And if you guys have any uh, questions, you can just type in the chat and I can uh, see it and answer you guys. Okay. Okay, so I have this uh, London, London uh, thing here and then I can uh, expand this data, I close the old tab, and then I will look into cycle higher. Cycle higher. Cycle, cycle higher. Uh, wait, sorry. Uh, London bicycles. Wait, I'm sorry. Um, it's not coming out. Okay, yeah, it's here. So London bicycles, we have uh, this table called cycle higher. So when you go into cycle higher, you can uh, query the cycle higher table. So you can see that uh, uh, this is info, by the way. So when you look at the info, you can see that, okay, um, this uh, particular scheme table has this uh, particular schema. So you can see that 
uh, there's no uh, primary key here. Uh, although this rental ID is required, but it's actually not a primary key. It's just a database constraint. Okay, so if let's say you want to take a look at what is the data, what is the data about, you click on preview. So you can take a look on um, the results per page, uh, number of data. So you can see something like this. So, um, so now the quest asks us to um, to take a look at um, all the end station names from this uh, particular. Uh, this particular data set here. So as per what the, the Quick Lab gave me, so I would select a station name from uh, BigQuery dash public data is, this one is a common name. So when you use it, it's uh, it will refer to all the public data available in BigQuery and then London bicycles and then cycle hire will be the table. So you can see that over here, it gives you a preview on uh, how much this query will process when run. So just remember, when you use a normal BigQuery uh, database, right, it will give you a little preview there. So later on, you can you can know how much data will run because how much data will run in the end will uh, cost to your bill. Uh, if I remember correctly, uh, for BigQuery, the first one terabyte of data that you run will be free. So just remember to not go over that if you want to play around with that uh, data and the public data set. So we can see. All the end station names are here. Okay, so it's quite simple. So over here, you can see uh, execution details. So execution details over here will be um, how long each process takes. So the first thing is uh, input. So it inputs to this a particular thing we call a scheduler. So the scheduler um, schedules the jobs into different different machines. So as we can know that um, in order to make uh, data consistent, right, or uh, highly available, um, the data will be available in many, many different machines. So let's say uh, machine one has uh, data from row one to 1,000, machine two has uh, data from row uh, 2,001 to uh, 3,000 and so on. So all of these data are partitioned in different, different uh, machines, right? So this input will give this thing called the scheduler on what uh, it's being, is being processed. And then later on, it will do a repartition, which means that it uh, partitions which, which computer or which uh, CPU will be scheduled to find which data. Okay, and, and then after that, the output. So output will be, uh, it consolidate the data from all of these different uh, CPU and instances into one single, uh, into one single uh, re result table here. So it's actually quite a marvel of engineering. I, I said it again. <laughs> so um, do take a look on how BigQuery works if you have time. Okay, so um, after about 20 seconds, and then you want to find uh, how many bike trips were 20 minutes or longer. So for now, we have where duration more than 1200, which 1200 is uh, 20 minutes. So let's take a look at the execution details while, while we run it. Okay, so you can see that this query will process 2.6 gigs when run. So we are getting more and more. Okay, so when you run it, you take a look, you can see that elapsed time is uh, one point something second. They are still processing on how to output this thing. And then, well, stuff should run. There's no questions in the audience yet. Okay, so this one I think should take around a minute as per my experience. So yeah. Okay, so you can see that the results uh, ran through about 35 seconds, which is also really, really very fast. You, you, you can try on your own computer, like uh, how long will your own computer run this? So. For now, we can see that, okay, there are so many results, which means that um, there are so many results uh, which are from the total, which we can see uh, select something from blah, blah, blah. And then we can see how many rows are there in total, or we can just uh, take a look at this table itself, the details here. So we can say that, okay, um, we got 24 million rows, and then 
uh, in the end, this one came out with uh, 7 million rows. Yeah, it came out with 7 million rows, so you can say that, okay, that 30% um, of this red shares lasted more than 20 minutes. Okay, so um, to test our understanding, which is here. Okay, a fully managed petabyte scale data warehouse that runs on the Google Cloud. Of course, it's called BigQuery. Yay. Project contains data set and data set contains tables, which is true. So for just now, our project is this particular uh, project. And then in the case of uh, Google, right, their project ID is actually called BigQuery Public Data. This is their project name. And then our data set is called London Bicycle Data Set, and the tables is called Cycle Higher Data. So we have that, which is true. And then with BigQuery, you can access data sets shared publicly from other Google Cloud projects, true, which is what we are doing right now, right? Okay, so there are more SQL keywords, which is group by, count, and order by. Um, I assume you guys all also already know that. So um, just for the sake of this lab, so group by will be, we group all of our data based on the start station name. Okay, so of course it runs, and then we receive an output, and then from there, I, I think uh, I will say the count first. So what is count? So count basically means count all of the rows that satisfy this particular um, station name. So we want to know that uh, how many rows, or in our case, uh, how many uh, cycles higher uh, starts with this uh, particular station name. So we do count like this. Okay, so just, just to be clear to everyone, right? Um, it, is, it is quite customary to have a group by here um, together with a select statement here. So this name should appear in both places where count, uh, well, it, it usually will be like this. And then if let's say you are working on a SQL statement which you think is very messy, you can click on more and you can format query. Then they will uh, format a query for you. Lah. So I want to see how many um, bicycles, uh, bicycle rentals up come from which station. So I use count. So you can see this whole query uses one second, which is probably also because that we already cached this uh, particular data in uh, the processor itself. Okay, so you can see that, okay, there are so many data, blah, blah, blah. I won't go through uh, each and every one of it. Okay, so, um, okay. So you can see that when we have this uh, F0 thing here, it will be quite messy. I don't even know what F0 means, right? So I have this keyword called uh, S, which is uh, I treat this as something. So I can say S uh, num starts, which means that I give a name to this uh, particular column. So I run. Okay, as you can see that it now has a really nice name here. So here comes the scenario. What if I want to say that, okay, I want to see um, what are the least amount of uh, people, uh, what are the least amount of bike hires from a particular station, uh, from all these stations, okay? So I can say that, okay, now I want to uh, order by something, right? So I want to order by, uh, let's say I want to order by num starts. Okay. So by default, this will order in uh, ascending order, which means from low to high. If let's say you want to uh, order from, uh, at a descending order, which is from high to low, you add a keyword called DSC, which is uh, descending. So it will just uh, descend the thing. So you can see, okay, so this is this really weird station name that has only one start. I don't know why. But yeah, so over here we have another thing, test your understanding. Okay, uh, multiple choice question. So aggregate rows that share common criteria, we may return all the unique entries found for such criteria. So which is uh, share common criteria, which is group by, I think. Yep, I'm right. SQL function that will count and return number of rows that share common criteria, which is count as what it says. So create a liars or of a table or column, which is S, and then sort the return data from a query in ascending or descending order based on specific criteria or a column value, which is uh, order by, okay, which you order by this particular column. So in 
in most uh, cases, right, if let's say you don't use uh, use by or group by, right, you can you can order based on any column you want, and then you don't display the column. It's perfectly normal. It's okay. Okay, so now we deal with a big query already. Now we deal with a cloud SQL. So, uh, yep. Cloud SQL. So Cloud SQL is basically a managed database service. So for uh, what manage, uh, manage platform, blah, blah, blah. So later on, you'll probably have a cloud series and more details will be on there. But for now, uh, we work with um, <coughs> this managed database called Cloud SQL. So it's a fully managed database service, which means that you don't need to uh, you, you you don't need to worry about the electricity. You don't need to worry about the server. You just you just remember on um, how to write SQL queries and that's all. Okay, so this is a fully managed database. Um, okay, uh, received the following output. Yes, we did. Okay, so for now, let's uh, export this uh, particular result. Uh, da, 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 da. Sorry. So according to the tutorial, I should have this and then later on, I will need to save the query into a CSV file. Okay. And oh my God, do I really need to save this 600 max CSV file? Uh, save results. Uh, CSV. Um, Okay. Um, okay. Yeah, it's 10 max. Sorry, I didn't see that. So I'll download 10 max. Okay. So after that, we upload our files into a cloud storage, which is a storage place in a GCP. Okay. So cloud storage. So cloud storage, I would say, is an object storage, which means that everything inside there is being treated as an individual entity, which is an object. So anything you uh, put in or delete, you can just get it according to those uh, permissions, of course. And all this, um, I would say, uh, cloud storage are being organized in things called buckets, which means that you have one bucket and just dump everything there. So uh, in in the case of object storage, right, um, file names and everything are not really that important. As long as you know that particular file name, you can get that thing. But there is no particular a uh, sequence on whatever what is stored and how it's stored. Okay, so in our case, let's just uh, create a bucket. Let's copy the project name. Okay, so let's say let's call it um, let's because it's a globally unique name. So let's pick a global unique uh, permanent name. So why this bucket name needs to be unique is because uh, anyone can access this bucket anywhere in the internet, as long as you allow that. Lah. So in order to prevent clashings, so we have to name this that is globally unique. So people usually won't name fancy fancy names for this. I will be simply like this, okay? And then for the sake of this, uh, yeah, we just explain this. So next is choose to where to store your data. Um, so in GCP, the main thing uh, a lot of people use uh, cloud, public clouds is because of um, the reliability of this uh, particular objects. So let's say if one server goes down in one particular region, um, you can just redirect the traffic to another server in a, another particular region. So for this, uh, multi-region is of course the highest level. A uh, dual region, which two region, region is just single region. So if the single region goes down, then then it's gone. Yeah. Uh, storage class for the data. Of course, we have different different types of storage. This one, um, the the more I I would say the more uh more standard or the sorry the more higher this object is in this list, um, the more it will cost to store but the less it will cost to retrieve, okay? For the lower this thing is, the less it will cost to store, but the more it will cost to retrieve. So if let's say you are developing an application, you will need to know 
on uh, how much you will really uh, need. Okay, so in our case, let's just use the normal standard one, and then control access objects. Um, this one is just a uh, access, and then if I want to prevent public access, blah blah blah. How do I want to protect the object data? If I want to do object versioning, if I want to do retention, and so on. So remember, all these are um, corporate corporate level tools. So anything that you remember here, um, you will know that okay, um, someone in the world, some big company is using it, and of course it's probably that by Google, which is also a big company, right? Okay, so let's um, look back at. Uh, what we have downloaded, okay, so we have this uh, bucket which is created here. We can add data, which from here I would drag and drop my uh, CSV file here. So it will start to upload. So maybe, yep, it's done. Okay, so in this particular lab, right, over there they will have something like check my progress and so on. So once you uploaded everything, you just check my progress. So the logic behind this is that it will it will um, pass a uh, API request to a uh, cloud storage and then it will assess it and then return the um, the result into our uh, quick labs console here okay so for now let's create a cloud SQL instance which is uh, where I want to put our database lah, our managed database so cloud SQL uh, yep SQL SQL So later on, probably we have more courses on uh, non-SQL stuff, uh, no-SQL stuff like uh, MongoDB, Redis, uh, or maybe graph databases, if you, if you guys are also interested, you all can request. Just request our wonderful lead, Yeon, and then she will think about it. And of course, our, our committee is there. <laughs> okay, so um, now we create a database which we create instance, create instance, yep. Okay, so we have uh, this few particular versions that we can choose from. So the reason they don't let you choose um, the like the latest and the greatest database engine or some particular specific weird version is because uh, in, in some cases, right, you actually share the database uh, sequence uh, instance with other people. Yeah, so that's why, um, they don't simply let you choose. They just say, okay, if you have this version, then maybe you share with this other guy and so on. Okay, so create instance, select MySQL. And then uh, for the database name, uh, for instance ID, let's just put our project name, password also project name, um, version 5.7, blah, blah, blah and then create instance. Also, as you can see here, um, this uh, instance, right, I would say, is its own particular computer by itself, but in some cases, share with other people, yeah. For, so for more details, please read up on uh, how, how the cloud actually works. So you can see that uh, over here is the virtual CPUs. So it has four virtual CPUs, 26 gigs of memory and 100 gigs of SSD storage, which is a lot more than what what we require already. But anyways, let's test our completed task and see if it passes. If it does not pass, yeah, it passed. If it does not pass, just wait for a few minutes of, just wait for a minute or a few seconds for it to pass. Okay, so uh, let's wait for it to set up and then let's just take a look here. So uh, new queries in Cloud SQL. So as we can know, as many of us know that uh, we have uh, DDL, which is a database definition language. And of course, uh, we also have DML, database manipulation language. So DDL, which is our create, uh, create tables, create database, and so on. So as long as you are creating or deleting something, you are dealing directly with the database. That's why it calls a database, uh, database definition language. Yeah, you define how the database is. Okay, so as I said just now, uh, we have this cloud shell here. So this cloud shell is this uh, particular uh, computer on the internet that Google provided for us to do some stuff. Yeah. 
So let's wait for it. Wait for everything to load. So if let's say you are on your own uh on, on your own account, right? On GCP, um this thing here, it gives you a persistent five gig uh, home directory, which means that you can download anything in there. But the only bad thing about Cloud Shell, uh, to prevent abuse, right, it will auto uh, shut down and restart every few hours, uh, I think. Yeah, maximum 12 hours per, per uptime. So you can see uh, as it's creating, let me play around with something like, let's say, um, I don't know, pinggoogle.com. Yeah, and then what else? So uh, one good thing about Cloud Shell is that um, compared with your local environment, right? If you use Cloud Shell, you will have an auto authenticated, which means that if you use Cloud Shell, you don't need to key in your username, password, you don't need to select your objects. Uh, you don't need to select your projects anymore. So you just switch up here, you just click here and then you switch your uh, particular project and then down here, you will switch it automatically. You can see that now I'm in this particular project, right? And then uh, this is my username and uh, so on. So this thing is still creating, uh, I don't know, what you want me to play? Uh, APT install something? So for those that are wondering, right, this is this. Uh, I would say all computers in a uh, GCP that you can access has an internet speed of five hundred max up down. Yeah. So I can see <clears throat> this particular computer is using Debian, Debian ten, and then it's on GCP. The kernel is this, blah blah blah, and so on. And then it has eight gigs of RAM. Wow, hmm. interesting. So the database is still creating. I don't know why it's taking so long. Yeah. So if any questions, you guys can ask first, or I'll just take a drink. If I'm still waiting for this. Oh, so Yen, you have tried on this quest, quest already. Next five minutes. Hmm. Okay, we have about 20 more seconds to the five minute mark. <clears throat> so if you guys have any questions, just uh, chat. If you guys cannot chat, I'm not sure. Um, just ping us in the Discord group. Yeah, if you guys cannot chat, just ping us with the, in the Discord group. Hmm, okay. Yep, it's more than five minutes now. Okay, so um, just to recap, what we have learned today is a BigQuery and Cloud SQL. So BigQuery is our, um, <clears throat> sorry. BigQuery is our database warehouse solution where Cloud SQL is our managed database solution. The difference between this is BigQuery is designed for a data retrieval and data storage, these two only. Cloud SQL is more on um, dynamic stuff, like anything you would do with your SQL database. But for BigQuery, uh, if I remember correctly, you cannot edit rows, which means that if you want to edit rows, you can either delete that row and add another row or delete the whole table and recreate another table. Yeah, it's it the the dif the difference is this, but the but the good thing about big big query is that it's very fast when you want to query data. Yeah. Okay, so I think we created a database. So let me check my progress. Oh my god, it's so slow. Why la? Why so slow? I also don't know why. <clears throat> In the meantime, you guys have any questions, just ask. Um, yep, okay, it's created, finally. Okay, 
so finally it's created. Let's continue with another task. Okay, so in this uh, cloud shell here, which is our cloud computer, as you can see, let's connect to our um, this uh, particular data, uh, database instance. Okay, <clears throat> so you can see, okay, so cloud SQL connect, and then our uh, password, hey, sorry, our, <clears throat> our instance, and then it will ask on, if you wanna authorize this API call. So you will ask, and it will say, okay, if you wanna let this particular machine access this uh, Google Cloud Platform thing. So you see Google is even secure in its own uh, environment, right? Okay, so it's now allow listing, which is another word for white listing. <clears throat> I'm still wondering why it's taking so long. If let's say you want to connect uh, from a public place, you can just connect using this public IP address. Yeah, which is here. Hmm. I wonder what's taking so long. Okay, so enter password. Password is uh, the same. <clears throat> and then we're in. Okay, so this is just like any other uh, database we have. Like we have, you can see show databases. Uh, yep, so we have this uh, different, different databases as you can see. Okay, so for now, let's create a database for our tutorial. So we create a database called uh, bike, which is which passed. And then, you know, there's one row affected. I don't know where. And then let's test our task and then make a table. So, oh, oops. Go in again. Oh my God, why? Okay, so the next thing we, we will do is to create a table in this database called uh, bike. So this table will have uh, our station name and also a number which we exported just now, right? Okay, so let's um, wait for it to load. I'm so sorry. Uh, password, that's my password, yep. Okay, so hopefully I don't control C accidentally again. Uh, so what do we do now? We use this database called bike, and then we create a table called London one, and also create a table called London two. Okay, so now when we do show databases, we have this um, table bike here. Okay, and then when we show tables, you see that we have London 1 and London 2 here. Okay, now just to confirm that the tables we created is empty, we just select all from our table, which is an empty table, which we expected. Okay, so remember the CSV file we uploaded just now, right? So now we want to upload our data to uh, this particular uh, database here. So what do we do now? So a Cloud SQL database here, we have this button called import. So we click on import. And then we can select this uh, particular bucket that we already did. So what do we do? We browse the buckets. And then we have this CSV <clears throat> that we select. So this file format is CSV as we know, the database in bike, and then the table name will be uh, London 1. Right? And then import. So while it's importing, let's just stand by the command to request the thing. I think it's done. Yep, so you can see all the tables here is spitting out all the data. So usually, right, when people just want to inspect that data and they don't want the whole thing to spam their whole console here, you can do limit. So I can, I can limit the result to 10 only, see? So everything is nicely limited here, just like everything should be. 
Okay. <clears throat> and then, um, oh wait, I think I forgot to download the, the London 2 thing. Hmm. I'm sorry. So let's go back to, uh, let's go back to the place where, wait, I want to download back the uh, London 2 data. So for now, what data I have, I have start station name, right? So now I want to download the end station name. Start station name, end station name. Yep. So. Give me a moment. Uh, I'll stand by the bucket also. Okay, let's run it. <clears throat> and then save the results. Okay, then we have that. <clears throat> then we add this thing into our bucket, which is here. Oh no, oh no. Uh, upload files. Mm, seven, two, yep, this one. Okay, so I'll just upload this. And then, just now I already uploaded the first one, and then now import another one, which we will import into our London 2 uh, data. Maybe in CSV, this database, then the table will be London 2. Okay. <clears throat> So once it's importing, once it's done importing, then we can uh, do our queries. Okay, so as we can know that um, many of our data are, is probably not clean, right? So let, let's say, let's take a look on, um, in London one, uh, let's say we have uh, numbers that are zero, which is not important to us, right? Oh, where should come before limit? Sorry. Yep, so we have this particular row that's called start station name. I, I don't know why it's called like that, but yeah, it's, it, it happened, right? So let's take a look at our uh, London 2 uh, data. Okay, so we don't have anything that uh, is equals to zero. So in order to clean this data, we do delete from this particular database where this particular constraint goes on. Okay, so to save time, let's do this. So delete from London 1 where number equals to zero, delete from London 2 where number equals to zero. So you can see that one row affected here, zero rows affected here. Okay, and then I, of course I can also insert values, right? I can insert, like, let's say I want to insert a custom station name and a number. So let's say, okay, insert into this table name called London1, uh, and then uh, these two columns, which is start station name and number, these two columns, the values is this and this. Okay, done. So 
it's uh, inserted. So you can see that over here, right? You can see this uh, SQL database part here. You can see that this CPU utilization is being gone up, which is uh, normal. Uh, in production cases, sometimes you will see that, okay, uh, maybe what is happening, this CPU utilization goes so high. So in production cases, you will take a look into these uh, instances and see if there's any, there is anything that is happening that is not supposed to happen. Okay, so union, where we combine these uh, two particular databases. Okay, so what happens in this command is that uh, I select this one and then everything blah 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 and then where this thing equals more than something, this one you all know already, and then union, I combine these two databases, London 1 and London 2 these databases, and then I order by this particular thing. So what happens is, um, station name, blah, blah, blah. okay, so what happens is that uh, it will combine this um, two, sorry. So it will combine with this these two things, right? It will combine London 1 and London 2, and then see if there's anything more than this particular thing. But if let's say uh, London 1 and London 2 has um, this particular station here, so it will take precedence, which means that London 1 will take priority over London 2. So the values in London 1 will overlap the one in London 2 and so on. But in a more normal case, usually, we will say that, okay, we want to select um, this, uh, because as we know, uh, London 1 is start station, right? So I will say number as start station. Then, at the end over here, I would say, uh, number as end station. Hmm, I wonder what's happening. But uh hmm. but anyways in usual cases a uh, start station will be in front of here uh, and end station will be over here. You will have another column called end station. I think there's something wrong with my SQL statement, but yeah, there's something wrong with it, but uh, I'll, I'll just not debug it <laughs> for the sake of time. Yeah, so um, I think that's the end of this uh, particular introduction to SQL for Bitcoin and SQL. So you can see that from here, right, uh, we did some SQL keyword thing, we did Cloud SQL, we did some queries in Cloud SQL, we did some queries here also, and then uh, throughout this whole tutorial, right, uh, we see that, okay, there are um, this test that we need to complete in order for our task to be counted. And then over here, there's a little particular uh, checkpoints where you can see, you can open up and select the checkpoints and you can check this particular progresses. So from here, you will know that one is how much weightage it each holds. And two is that what you haven't done. Yeah, you just go and check your progress and so on. Okay, so that's it for this thing, I think. So after this session, uh, later on I will have a little tips for you guys. So after this session, uh, you guys are free to do whatever you want. I will stay here and answer your question if you have any. So let me continue my uh, PowerPoint for now. Okay, so we're done on demo, right? Okay, so off record stuff. So <laughs> please turn off recording. <laughs> 